39. That is Ben Hamilton, Benjamin Hamilton, who was getting a shout out earlier on. As, uh, the time. So that's Ben Hamilton we're looking at now, just behind the John Wall. As you see the time stop. Is it possible to have a shout out? Anything's possible. Yeah, okay. there's a shout out. Oh, the 39 spot oh, out. Oh, look at that. Just look, look like there. He just caught the break on the way in. So yeah, this Ben Hamilton, after that stunning start, straight to the top of the times. Eighth place, 0.6. I don't think he's going to be happy with that. Adams Hamilton in fifth at the moment. Remember, we are after the top. Ben Hamilton, fastest lap, 52.0. Oh, we're so close to it. Hello and welcome to a new video and today we're looking back at BIKC 2023 National Finals and we're going to see how it ended up and we can see some of the controversy from that uh, day. And yeah, hope you enjoy the video. So, the day before BIKC we went to a family session and to get a little bit of practice in, get a few laps in, see how the carts feel and the new track layout. And, well, it was quite helpful, but they were running like an hour behind, I think. So, they had to sort of, they sort of cut our sessions a bit short. So, instead of being about 15 minutes, they were more like 10 minutes long. And, actually, there wasn't actually that many yellow flags. In our session, there was just a lot of traffic, as you'll probably see in a second, as we're going out for our light test. And I'll just skip to when the lights fully go green. But you'll just see the amount of traffic I have. And here we are, the lights are green now. And you might have noticed my microphone um, on the camera is not working, so that's why it's silent. But we're getting a new one. Um, we're getting one a replacement, so that should be... Uh, we should have that before the final round of buck. Well, as you can just see, the amount of traffic on this top floor. And I'm having to weave through everyone. And someone just stops pretty much at the side of the track. I get overtaken by a cadet. That's quite embarrassing. And he just completely oblivious and puts me in a barrier. But, anyway, this is sort of what you expect for a family session. Just carnage. And now that person tries to put me in a barrier going down the straight. Now... Going through the fast speed of the circuit for the first time in these electric carts. Going around the outside of Mateo. Showing off a little bit there. And we're up the inside. Easy move. Cadet cart. Just getting a feel for the amount of grip I have. Because in that session, it was like in there, it was so cold. Like on the weekend. As you can just see, I'm weaving in and out of everyone. It's just, every, I think I maybe got like one or two clean laps in without any traffic. But, as I was saying, the, this weekend was so cold. Like, the, like it, when we woke up in the morning, actually, I completely missed the apex. That's the worst line I've seen. Anyway. It, anyway, it's just a family session. I'm trying to get to grips with it, so... Excuse my uh, below-average driving. Anyway, as I was saying, the grip levels were quite low. As you can see, that boost button sort of flickering. Can you... Like, it's not... I pressed it and oh that was quite a big slide there and it's not really let's see if we use the boost button over here is it gonna work press it like you could just see like I'm really confused because nothing's happening and I feel like this this oh no we've got another yellow this, that happened in qualifying the next day as you'll see I had a cart like this but I thought at the time that that was normal uh, because both carts I had in these family sessions had that same issue. But as soon as I got a cart that actually um, was normal, I was so much quicker. And you'll just see in qualifying, like, I don't have that boost. And that really puts me at a disadvantage. I think I was like seven tenths off. As we've got a red flag here, which I'm just going to skip by really quick. And we are back underway in this family session. And we're going to just try and learn this track as quickly as possible. Relearn it. As some parts of the track feel like wider and and some bits feel a bit tighter. Right, going down the ramp once again. Sw swerving through all that traffic. For some reason there's a cadet stopped in the middle of the track. Don't know why that he's done that. Now sliding it through there. You can just see the lack, lack of grip. 
as I'm just trying to find that grip, and someone half spins in front of me, I'm going to try and go around the outside. Is that going to work? Yes, it does. I can see the boost button just flickering all over the place once again. Into here. Oh my lord, completely misses the apex. Once again. Trying to just learn this trap because I've only had like a lap or two by myself. Up the ramp, lobbing it in. Really need to chuck it in a bit earlier. <clears throat> because you actually get four wheels off the ground. Um, Which is very surprising. And so I'm complete. I'm just Tokyo drifting now. I'm just having a bit of fun. As we go down the ramp once again. You see, I'm just a bit angry at myself for just completely missing all the apexes. Again, another cadet. Just oh, the amount of traffic. Honestly. I'm just sliding around because I know it's going to be hard to just try and get a good lap in. Going to send one up the inside of that cadet. Luckily he sees us, gives us room, and we're going to... The extra power is going to... We're going to fly past. As we try to go past Rory, but he just covers off the inside like an absolute melon. But we get back past him. And... I think that's pretty much... All... There really is to say about these families. I had two family sessions, both were quite short. But yeah, I think it did help a bit. But I feel like if I had a car which I actually, which the booster person actually worked, I would have known for the next day in qualifying, and then would have known that car was rubbish. But I saw Jack up there. But there's not really much we can do about it because I just thought it was a normal car. So you can see he's still sliding it through there. Just having a bit of fun. You know, trying to send another cadet. There we go. And yeah, let's go straight into qualifying for BRKC National Finals. Last year. Got taken out and couldn't make the finals, but definitely doing it for 2024. There's always next year. Always yeah. next. F1 drivers say it all the time. Well, you know, we're just looking forward to next year. You know what I mean? Forget the race is coming up in three days' time. We're just, you know, next year's it's coming. Next, next year's year. coming. Yeah, there's, there's always two schools of thought. There's always certain kinds of fans that are always like, uh, it's all, this is my year, and some of them are like, well, there's always next year if it doesn't go uh, quite well. But we see uh, the top set, we see these guys now out on for their lights test. We're looking at the 39, that is Ben Hamilton, Benjamin Hamilton, who was getting a shout out earlier on. As, Indeed. Uh, Juni's now going through the lights test, nice slow walking pace, well respected for the lights there. Also, Ed Spain is just to say, he also came third in the Weaver Tools British Kart Championships now, in the Honda GX200. The, the full-on British Championships. To come, to come third in any class in the British Championship is impressive. Yeah. But third place in, Hon in Honda Cadet, spec motors, spec engines. It's quite a very, it's a very tough class. So fair play for third, for third place. Just proves that I don't do, I don't do my research hard enough. Because looking at, I should be looking at the British Championships. That's the yeah. full-on British Championships. Indeed. As uh, we've now got uh, the British Indoor Karting Championships on circuit here at Warrington. And the driver's now hopefully trying to bang in a quick time. So that's Ben Hamilton we're looking at now. Just behind him is John Wall. As you see the time starting to pour in. This is going to be a little bit skewed because these guys have done the lights test. And uh, we're now we'll just hopefully start seeing the first flying laps come through. It King Adam TV says, soon. is it possible to have a shout-out? Anything's possible. Yeah, okay. there's a shout out. Oh, the 39 spun oh, out. Oh, look at that. Just look, look like there. He just caught the brake on the way in. So. Yeah, this driver, it's, it's just the cold tyres and faster carts. They're not used to this. There's a lot of seesawing at the steering wheels here that we just did not see when we were watching them practice over the last few days. Yeah, you've, you've really got to try and work to get these carts in the window. I wouldn't necessarily say... Uh, a lot of weaving around but just trying to build the pace up if you try and go for a push lap straight away the cart's going to bite you and it's going to spit you out which is what Ben Hamilton's just found out the hard way there um, I'm just yeah, going to say make, Mark Martin says guys, guys the boost push to pass being used in qualifying being yes, used in every it session is and just to go through it it's used every 55 seconds it means drivers cannot use it at the same place every single lap so it becomes more strategical I'm also going to say that because we are running speed four, that what happens with the push to pass, it gives you extra revs. So basically there's an extra 300 RPM at the top uh, of the rev range, which means we're really excited what that can do for the actual racing. Um, but it's going to get, if anybody's using it when they're coming out of the hairpin, waste of time. Yeah. Don't bother. End the straight, that's when you need those extra, extra little bit of speed. Uh, but at the moment, Ben Hamilton, okay, he's, he's had an interesting first few laps. 
but he has managed to pop in a 52.755. But Mason, Mason Chahal has just gone through in 52.456 and has gone straight to the top. These are, I think these are only days. He's probably another half a second at least. Um, I think we're getting to the, maybe get into the 51s on this one because 52.4, we're a little bit ahead where we were on the previous run on lap times. 51 is Looking definitely good. coming here. So 52.4 already, looking at Mason Jahal, 11, uh, Cart 11, he's back for his fourth time in the BIKC Finals. Anyone, the astute amongst you will know, it's the fourth year we've been running it. This is his fourth time here, so every year so far he's qualified through, I believe, off the top of my head, this will be his last year in juniors, which is going to age out the category. So if he comes back for BIKC next year, he'll be moving into um, the adult category. Sixth last year, Mason Jahal, he's had a good run so far, first, second, second is his form guide. Now he's stuck on something. Let's see what he's going to do. Is he going to push? To, is he going to try and get past him? Or is he going to back off? No, he's pushing. He wants that corner. But all yeah. this lap, this ain't going to be a good lap because he is stuck and about to behind a driver at number 40. Yeah, John Bolter is he's now throwing yeah. it down the inside there. Bolter's let him have it. Yeah. But um, Chahal now 52.0. He's currently got, yeah. five and, currently got five and a bit tenths in hand. You over, can see they wanted to get on with it. Yeah, like, he's he could have backed off and gone, let's push some space. Now. Boom. He's just trying to find time, so he's now got a bit of clear track, so this next lap might not be the best, the lap he's on might not be the best, but it may be enough to extend his uh, advantage over second place Jake Anders, Preston driver, currently about half a second off, one of the quickest drivers we've seen around here, his best time at the top of my head is a 51.6, which on this track is extremely quick. As now Elliot Potter now comes up into P4, just edges out uh, Henry Barrington and Jacob Kuehl, who's in P6, John Wall, Adam Sims, Oli Henderson moves up into P9, her Casper Abaki, then John Bolter, who we just saw um, being dispensed by Mason Jahal in P11, Jack Harrison, Lawrence Cameron, Tyler Richardson, Edward Haslam completes your 15 runners and riders here. It's a 31 overall from juniors as Jack Harrison moves up into P11. That is a 53.2. No one so far able to live with the pace of Mason Jahal. Still half a second to the good over Jake Anders. He did improve on his last lap on a 52.5. John Wall now goes third on a 52.6. Really close behind. Mason Jahal definitely has the measure of this junior field. As they come through this third hairpin now, they're going to come up under the trademark Dunlop Bridges here. Let's see if he can find a 51. Not quite a 52.3. I feel that time is definitely coming here. Jacob Lammers says, can he have a shout out? He says, he can't make it here this year, wants to be here. Of course you can, Jacob, absolutely yeah. no problem at all. Jacob Lammers, former cadet champion here for mm. Warrington. Yeah. So won it back in 2021 from the top I'm of I'm saying head. yeah, like I know that. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely not been reading the I'm book. saying yeah, really like, notes, Russ. like, of course, yeah, yeah, of course, I remember him. Yeah, yeah, I thought you took him home to study him last night. <laughs> <laughs> what was that about no prep? <laughs> As we now get back to the action, still hopefully, Mason, let's see what Mason Jahal can do. Jake Anders has closed that gap at 52.4, it's about three tenths now is the gap. Let's see if Jahal can open it up. We're looking for that magical 51. We haven't seen it just yet, but a 52-0 is the closest we've got so far. Out of the third hairpin, let's see if Jahal can manage it. Get go it, over I've got something, I've, got something I've never seen before in BIKC. Go on. Okay, driver, this is straight from race control. We've got a link straight to race control, so any decisions, anything that happens, we get to find out straight away. Driver Charlie France and Julie Group 1 has been given a grid penalty for Heat 1 for ripping the boost button off a cart. That is impressive. That is, I've never seen that. He will start from the back of the grid for the first heat. Wow. That is have we got a bit of vandalism going on on, the, on our carts? That's an impressive feat there if he's managed so to... Uh, did, oh, wow. Didn't we spend a million pounds on the carts? I think there's yeah, something I in the order did. of that. <laughs> I think we did. Something in the order of that. These, these, electric, these electric carts, they're not cheap, but they are really they're, fun they're, to drive. They're not cheap. Um, they are and extremely we need twice, good fun. And we need twice as many. Um, hence the cost and all that, but they are fantastic. But they do last twice as long. It, 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 it does. They are actually an investment because we do actually... Uh, see the money back uh, eventually but um yeah really really good oh shout out paul brody great commentary from you guys like anybody wants to put any love for the commentary i'm yeah, not vain at all yeah, i'm not if, vain if one little wants, bit if anyone wants us to come back next year <laughs> we really do know once a year all right job for a change instead of just us random <laughs> ramblings as we now watch uh, some racing over the top 
So still, Mason Chahal would not have that 51 just yet, but the gap is three tenths at the front. John Wall's up into third place ahead of Henry Barrington. Elliot Potter, Jacob Kuehl round out the top six. Ben Hamilton, who had the spin earlier on, is P7. Jack Harrison, Adam Sims, John Bolter is your top ten. As we now try and see if we can get See, Ben Hamilton 51. had the early pace there. See, the others, I think, were just getting used to it. And Ben Hamilton just, he was the early pace setter, and now he's seventh. And uh, yeah, interesting that there's a lot of there's a lot of learnings going on out there, and um, we, you know that's the way we like it. This is uh, this is a difficult event to win. It, it requires a full skill set. Uh, for me, being able to win this event, the drivers who kind of win it, they're the most versatile drivers. They're drivers that have got every single part of the racing kind of package in their bag that they can kind of use. They can defend. They can attack. They're smooth. They know how to understand the car. They know exactly how much grip there is as the tyres get hotter. Um, there's, there's so much involved in this. Really exposes all of it, which is why we've got drivers out there who could be absolutely stunning in their home track. The track them they know like the back of their hand, but then suddenly they go up against the absolute elite drivers that exist in indoor karting, and yeah. it can be tough. Yeah, it's not an easy field to be a part of. And if you can hang with these guys, you can really hang with the best. As we now look at uh, number 10, Jake Anders. He comes over the line. Let's see if he's improved there. He hasn't managed to just yet. As uh, Jake has won, uh, he's done quite a bit of racing this year, quite a few different things. He's been uh, racing with both of our partners, both TKZ um, in the Northern Championship. He's doing the National Championship as well, as well as Club 100, uh, being 13 years old. He's still in the uh, cadet version of uh, Club 100, hopefully getting into uh, the 125 adult ones later on next year. But uh, a very fast driver around here is Jake. He's normally uh, one one we find at the front of uh, the race we see so far. He goes through the fast again, hopefully keeping it absolutely pinned as they now go into T1. Nice smooth line through there. Let's see if we can get a 51 from Jake. And as it be enough to put him on pole, if he can do it, he's done a 51 before. Let's see if we can find. There is a lot uh, of love for Jake on the, on the live stream. So, yeah, there's a lot of support out there for Jake Anders. Currently running in second place. So, really, really good. Yeah, Lee Davis, come on, Jake, closing that gap now. Um, yeah, indeed. Uh, Tom, specifically specific for you. Can you, give a, can you give Lewis Tracy a shout out, Tom? Can I give Lewis Tracy a shout out? I believe I can give Lewis Tracy can. a shout out. To shout out for Lewis Tracy. There's also uh, a lot of stuff coming through here. Harry Eden, come on, John. Do traffic proud. Taylor Norton, come on, Mason. Team Edmonton. So that's referencing the top three drivers that we've got there. So that's Edmonton, Preston, and Trafford are your top three in terms of tracks. And uh, you all know the tracks are up. The tracks are in the country. We all uh, get a little bit competitive, try and see uh, who can get the most drivers through. No one's been able to top calling for the amount of drivers through so far. That's They've stunning. had two champions over the course of the year. Can stunning. they add a third one to their tally? Or in juniors, are we going to see Edmonton or Preston pick up a championship? It'd be a second title for Preston and a first for Edmonton off the top of my head. But Jake Anders has not been able to improve just yet. Still fastest time is Mason Chahal of 52.073 for the driver from Edmonton in the 11. And so it's Anders still second, Wall still third, Potter still fourth, Harrison, Barrington, Akul, Hamilton, Sims, Boltery, your top ten, Henderson, Rebecca, then Richardson, Haslam and Cameron are your 15 runners and riders. About three minutes left to go here. Crunch and, time. Uh, yeah, we're really getting towards the business end of the session oh, now. Will we see a 51? It'd be great to see I think, we, I think we will, you know. I really want to see that 51. Even if we don't see it in qualifying, we'll definitely see it yeah. uh, when we get to go racing. Just in front of Anders, that's John Bolter, P10. He's got eight tenths to find. He wants to try and get towards the front. Akul goes over the line. He doesn't quite improve there. Not an improvement for Bolter or Anders. These times are just starting to drop off at the moment. All the drivers seem to be a couple of tenths, maybe two or three tenths slower um, than where they were um, where they were at the start of the session. So maybe these guys just start to maybe get a little bit tired and they're just struggling to find that. Say that as Casper Baki moves up into P11. He gets one position. It's really close towards the bottom section here. You've got 12 carts covered by eight tenths at the yeah. moment. It's exactly what you want to see in indoor car. You want to see it as close yeah. as possible. We've got Dark Force, 2543. It says, I commentated on my local final and the people on track loved it. So if I can one day I can join you in the commentary box, I just want to make it clear that me and Tom will be commentating for for how many hours over the 
last two days. I think we worked it, I think <laughs> we like, worked it out at one point. It's like 15, 16 it's hours ridiculous. or something like that. <laughs> yes, is the answer to that. You definitely can. You get you to Sunday and your, your voice is just starting to feel it over the course He's great. of... Um, Rian says, Team Sport Carter, will the third floor ever return at Team Sport Reading? It was so good. Well, we've got combat carts now in Team Sport Reading. This is also amazing. So at the moment, combat is doing really, really well. Combat is a new, it's like a certain video game that has got a, yeah. Um, uh, an Italian yeah. plumber <laughs> in it and his mates. Yeah. That name so, that we can't say. Yeah, so you can, you can boost, you can fire things, you can do, that's all at Team Sport Reading as well as Preston and Newcastle and Mitchell as well at the moment. Yeah, it might be. In yeah, maybe, maybe a few other surgeons to come. You, you might know what? Honestly, I was originally when I saw the idea, I was like, mm, well, it, well, it's a little bit like electrification to be fair. But we took a group. I think it was like 10, 11 of us went to Preston. You know what? It's actually hilarious fun. So you get a group of you together. You can find there was what I think our uh, one of our regional F and managers was chatting to him. He was uh, yeah. down at uh, Reading. He was uh, very very happy that he managed to go from first down to last in the space of a lap and a half because everyone got all the all the um, all the missiles and just started Indeed. to spam it and make sure he didn't win. Indeed, I just want to point out that Elizabeth Fees much that said Dark Force Two Five Four. It's my son. So my I assumed it was an. <laughs> It was a, we don't know who these people are, we just see the, we just see the tag names come up. So, uh, yeah. But, you know, we've got uh, Dom's, uh, Dom's lad is here. Uh, today, Dom is the CEO of Team Sport. Oh, yeah, driving some BIK himself. Indeed. A couple of his young lads have yeah. uh, given it a crack. And uh, he's been, he'll be in the commentary box for a, li a little bit, you know what I mean? I I'm not saying we do employ people under the age of 16 years old, it has to be said. But uh, yeah, As we've the got check flag comes out on <laughs> session. Take there Mason Jahal wins. <laughs> Jake Anders second. John Ward third. Elliot Porter. Well, he's a son of CEO. Jack Harrison is in fifth. Henry Barrington is in sixth. Jacob Equal is in seventh. Ben Hamilton up for that stunning start straight to the top of the times. Eighth place, 0.6. I don't think he's going to be happy with that. Adam Sims in ninth. John Bolter in tenth. Ollie Henderson in eleventh. Casper is in 12. So as you can probably tell, I was not very happy with my qualifying. My car, just the boost didn't even work. Uh, it only really seemed to work on the last lap, which I pushed it going down the ramp. And that really seemed to work. But every single other time it just didn't work at all. Which probably shows why my fastest lap was like my third lap. And then I could, couldn't go any quicker due to the boost was not working. Um... But yeah, it's really annoying because it works the same way as the regional finals. So that position, which I qualified in, which was eighth, um, I'm going to be starting eighth for both heat one and heat two, no matter where I finish. So that's going to really affect me for basically the entire day. So qualifying, I thought, was probably the most important part of the day. And then, and I messed it up. I mean, not me, but the car just wasn't up to speed. And it's a bit disappointing considering they tested all the carts and they hadn't really realised that. And then later on, Jake Enders actually had that cart and the boost button fell out. So maybe it's like a faulty connection or something. But the best, let's see how well we can do, see how many places we can make up and hopefully get to the grand final. Fingers crossed. And the, and leave the sound, us hanging. You can't leave us hanging with that. I think <laughs> you we can't need, leave we need us hanging on that. On that one. But that story time is going to have to wait as we've got cars heading round to start the second heat for the juniors. First heat for these drivers here. So, Jahal and Anders on the front row, Wall and Potter on the second row, Harrison Barrington, Akul, Hamilton, Sims, Bolter, uh, Henderson, Rebecca, Haslam, Richardson and Cameron are your runners and riders. 15 drivers in this one to make 31 total in uh, the junior category. You can see Jahal and Anders. Anders just looking over to the side, making sure he doesn't end up with a jump start. Are they pushing the safety car there? That looks to me like they are. As the pace car drops the throttle, we here are we go. going racing here. So Jahal and Anders lead us away. And it is Jahal who keeps it down the inside. As it looks like an attack there from John Wall has pushed Anders down into third. It may be fourth. 
um, here as it looks like Potter's trying to go down the around the outside there as the drivers now file up onto the top section. So it's Chahal and Wall, your top two, and there's down into Lich, third lots place. Lots of little bits of contact yeah, all the way down the field. A little bit of bumping and pushing. You can just see a bit of barrier contact there. Drivers trying to go side by side through the top end of the circuit. But it's Chahal who's going to lead them down with a little bit of an advantage. Looks over his shoulder. He knows that he's got a bit of time here in hand over John Wall. Chahal, the fastest driver in qualifying by about three tenths of a second here. Can he show his pace and drive away from the field in this first heat? Oh, look at that. Number 9 goes, 19 goes really, really, really wide. John Wall there. He's got might do a bit of defensive driving coming up here. We've got Mason Jahar leading. Jake Anders, who's got a lot of very confident fans in the in the live stream, just saying that he's going to run and hide. He's not quite running hiding just yet, but it is really, really tight. And look at this. This literally some contact here and 41 makes contact and then has to look behind for 35 Elliot Potter right behind and all this is giving Mason a little bit of breathing room right at the front of the field but John Wall in second Jake Anders is now down in third Elliot Potter in fourth Henry Barrington in fifth at the moment Jack Sick Ben, Hall, ben Hamilton who made such a such a fantastic start to the event when he was lapping really, really quick, currently coming around about seventh, and that is obviously as a result of a bit of a poor qualifying. Jacob in eighth, John Bolter in ninth, Adam Sims in tenth, Casper's in eleventh, Tyler Richardson is in twelfth, Ollie Henderson is in thirteenth, Edward Haslam in fourteenth, and Lawrence Campbell is at the back in fifteenth at the moment. Look at the gap the Mason Chahal has got. He's absolutely charging away, and the battle for second is so fierce. Sorry, Tom, I was literally spat at you when I said the word <laughs> fierce. John Wall and Jake Anders, our, our battle is so fierce that I think that's he's got to run away and hide. The battle here is for second. Yeah, fight for second here at the moment. Anders is trying to everything he can to get past John Wall, but as they do that, Jahal is just going to run away at the moment. He's about seven tenths of a lap, seven tenths of a lap quicker at this stage of the race than the guys who are behind him. 52.3 is the margin, is the lap time he's setting at the moment. Last time by Anders is going to have to, if he wants to try and get on the terms of Charles, Anders is going to have to try and do something about this quickly. He tries to go to the outside, there's no space there. The 19's just going to hold him at arm's length. Anders really looking racy here, but he's going to have to try and get past him while not letting Potter and Barrington, who are bearing down on him, get into the party on this one. Jack Harrison's not too far away, so if he's not careful, this is going to be a uh, five or six oh, car fight. Contact. Bit of a touch there as they go through the top section. Anders got the overlap. Is he going to be able to make a move like the story he's goes? Going oh, for there's it. a touch as contact. He tries to come Here across and cover it, but that's not really where there's a lot of contact there. That's going to end up with oh. a bit of a review later on. I have a feeling the black and white may that be coming his fortunate. way. That was quite I thought that was going to be carnage because lots of drivers got compromised there. And lots of drivers went for gaps that suddenly did not exist, but somehow they all got up, they all got through. With anything, what it's resulted is it spread everybody out of it. And uh, here we go, we are under yellows. You can't see the yellows, but they, yeah. we are I slowing down. I have a feeling, the black and white there, if, if one is leveraged uh, in Jake's general direction, more for the move after the contact to go right across the circuit than the contact itself, as uh, it was quite a heavy defense that he made going up the ramp as the lights are on yellow. The guys will scour the circuit, see if we can find out where it is. We'll, know, we'll have a look at our timing, see if we see a driver drop away. As soon as we go green flag racing again, we should get it going very quickly. The lights go green again, we're racing. Chahal looks over his shoulder, drops the throttle and tries to keep that 2.3 second gap as the fight was for second between Wall and Anders reignites. Looks like it was Jack Harrison that's had a few issues. He's dropped down the order into 11th place. Not aware of any penalties just yet. As now Wall and Anders are nose to tail once again. If Jake's gonna, Jake's gonna get past him, he's gonna have to try and do this it. This is the cleanly, battle. And he's gonna have to try and do it quickly. Because Jahal is now running away at the front of this one. 2.3 seconds is a massive gap in this sport. And he's already got that halfway through the heat. If this carries on, it could get even bigger. This is one of those spread out races I think you've seen actually in BIKC. Never, very rarely do we find like literally cl clumps of time between drivers. Like two seconds here, five seconds there. The, but the big battle, no doubt. 19, John Wall and 41, Jake Anders. Here we, here we go, <laughs> 41, looks at the carts bobbling around there as they went underneath the flyover section, but it's still 19, John Wall. They are at war, these two, aren't they? They're absolutely locked in combat. Yeah. And 
Kipchi, one of the smallest drivers here. That's really going to help. That's not really going to help him over the bumps of this circuit. You just need a cart on Settler, like, like you said earlier. Um, but he's got John Wall just holding him at arm's length. It's actually quite a good defensive drive so far from Wall. He's defending everywhere he needs to. And he's trying to run, trying to run and be as quick as he can everywhere he doesn't so one and a half seconds looks like the gap at the moment from what we can see is still Mason Jahal with the fastest lap on a 52.306 while Jake Anders is still trying to get back on terms and move through looks like Anders may have been assessed the penalty there as he's moved down the order ah no he popped back up as oh no he definitely has no, been assessed down. the penalty we've not seen anything yep. pop up on our timing and uh, I think that may have been for the move at the top. We'll uh, consult race control and see what we can find here. But Anders now, he's third on track. He's fifth in the order as he's got John Wall in front of him. Elliot Potter, Henry Barrington now third and fourth in standings. Uh, fourth and fifth right, on here the we road. Go. We've got it right on the live stream saying they're, sp they're spreading out on the yellows. I can report from race control. Uh, we have got eight, so we've got eight seconds for cart number 41, five for driving standards and contact, and three for speeding in the yellows, and also cart 35 and 36, Elliot Potter and Henry Barrington, both speeding in the yellows, and three second penalties have been applied to them. So number one, well picked out on the live stream, and number two, very we're on good it. Spot. We're on it. That was a very good spot from the guys. Oh, here we go. And once Anders again. still fighting here. Still fighting. He might be carrying a penalty, but he still wants to make this move on the road. He tried to go for it again there. Yeah. Maybe try for a repeat move of what he tried earlier on. He thought better of it this time. I think he's going to make the move. He's going to have to try it somewhere else because that move up the ramp is doesn't look like it's going to work for him this time around. <laughs> Wall's just, Wall is, um, he's wise to it now. So if Anders wants to try it, the other point here for Jake, if he, if he wants to try and keep hold of uh, third place here, he's going to have to try and find eight seconds on the carts that are around him. He's going to have to get past Wall and try and see how far up the order he can get now as they come through. In the background, about, right, Jen is literally, she's got so much to work with in this race. <laughs> she's got through. so much. She can go, right, I want that one, I want that one, I want that one. I think we're Ooh. definitely having an extended chat with her at the end of this one. But <laughs> two, and a, two and a bit minutes left on this. He Anders is really looking racy. Uh, Wall is still going defensive. Yeah. You can just see them trying to trying to push and trying to go. Anders is really good out with this back corner here. He's going to have to try and find a move somewhere else though, because Wall is just wise to it. Behind Harrison's made a made a move on Casper back to move up into the top ten. But it's the fight over second place on the road. He's glued that we're looking at. He's absolutely pushing here but what this backs up it backs up the points we were making earlier on what you don't want to do is you want to in these sort of heats the idea of the heats is you want to try and bank the points as much as you can if you go for a risky move just to try and get a position on track yep. you could end up losing a lot more either through contact like we've seen earlier on with a few drivers or through the penalty itself like we're seeing at the moment which is why you see in the cadets you've got the drivers starting to form like um, mini truces and just trying to work yep. together just to bank those points it's, it's better to bank points for third. two places yeah for cart number 41 at the present moment in time jake anders yeah and it's, that could easily increase yeah it's it's better to bank the points now than <coughs> to uh end up feeling it in the semi-finals if john moore knew this he could back the pack up yeah you know what i mean and, and then he it would almost, it almost push him all the way down happening happening because elliot yeah. potter's coming back into this one these two seem to be slowing off from what I can see. I say that, and they're wrapping in the low 52s. Very quick times uh, for the guys that are running around. They're sort of matching the pace of Mason Jahal, who's out in front. We've not really spoken about him in the last five or so minutes. He's that far ahead. We're focusing on this fight for second, for second on the road, which now is a three-cart train. But and 19 means, very wide again. Yeah. Really wide from the John Wall. The thing for John Wall, even if these two carts overtake him, Anders is carrying an eight-second penalty as the checker flag falls. Potter was carrying three seconds, so it didn't really matter if they did get past. So, Jahal takes the first win, nearly three seconds is the gap. It's the biggest wow. win we've seen so far. Wow. I think we'll be hard-pressed to see something bigger than that over the course of... So that was Heat 1. Um, what can I say, really? Got up to sixth place, made up two positions, but I was following another driver, and they gained ten seconds under yellow flags. And they only got a three-second penalty. Like, come on. <laughs> that still means he's gained seven seconds under yellows. So what's even the point of giving that penalty? Three seconds is not going to do anything. And they've specifically said that in the briefing that it would give more penalty time 
then you gain soon. If he gained 10 seconds, they would have given him maybe a 15 second penalty. But they just didn't. And phew, that really annoyed me. Um, because I probably could have got a lot higher up in that grid. But so everyone in front of me just gained so much time under the yellows. And I just couldn't really do anything. But in that, in those sort of situations, you can't really do much. So you just have to drive as best as you can. But I thought, at least I followed the rules. But there's some other drivers just like, don't listen in the briefings. And hopefully Heat 2 goes a little bit better. Strickland Harvey at the front. Joel gets his nice arty shot as the drivers move away to the middle. As we now get ready to go racing for the last He, did, no, he, did, he didn't right. get down that low as he did last time. It's no, like, that just make sure that's just a one-off. That's all. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, one and one and done. Yeah, <laughs> he's literally put his hip out. <laughs> <laughs> We're terrible to him, aren't we? He's he, he spent him and his team are make, taking all this effort to make us look really good and like we know what we're doing. All we're doing is terrorising him. We are. Yeah, <laughs> he loves it as well. <laughs> right. So juniors on the grid is Jahal and Anders on the front row. So the last opportunity for these juniors to influence where they're going to start for the final. They're really close to the pace cut there as that may end, fi end up finding himself Ooh. get overtaken here. But Jahal versus Anders as they go through here. It looks like again Anders has been done off the start. I think Wall. There you go. Beals backed out of it there. I think Anders has been done by one. He's been done by two this time. So not a good start there for Anders. And maybe a third. has gone down the inside maybe. No, that's Jake McHugh. He's got a really good start. He's up into third already. Barrington's now followed through as well. So Anders is plummeting down the order here. I think that's one, two, three, four, five carts in front of him now. It's brilliant. Oh, here we go. So what a great start from Nation Jahal, who has been the class of the field so far. He's really built on that qualifying performance with everybody else having to race really, really hard in the background. We're round the hairpins and it is driver number eight. Jacob has come so far up the field. It's like fantastic. So here we go. We're going to go over the start fish line. We're going to get the lap times and just see exactly how far away they are. So it's 39, John Wall in second. Jacob with a absolutely flying start. That's going to really help him going into the semi-finals. Henry Barrington in fourth place. Jake Anders in fifth. Ben Hamilton is in sixth place. That's a, such a fantastic heat in the previous heat. Seventh place, Elliot Potter. Tenth is Adam Sims and John Bolter. Casper is in tenth. Tyler Richardson, Edward Haslam, Lawrence and Ollie bring up the rear at the moment, but it seems to have calmed down a little bit. There's about a few tenths or so between most of the drivers as they come and charge down to the fastest part of the corner. That's a decent lead for Mason Chahal. He doesn't have to worry too much at this stage of the race. Seems to have it under control. Oh, what eight, a that's move. another fantastic maneuver. He's come for like fifth or sixth. Jacob Akil from absolutely nowhere. Tell what, the move on John Wall. He could do something here about number 17, Mason. He he is really in tune with what he is doing in that car. No doubt about that. And he's got that 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 move lined up. He's got it perfected on all the previous drivers that he's overtaken. I think, and he's already right on the back of driver number 17, Mason Chahal. I think we're going to see another attempt at that mover. Maneuver, we will, on, we will, on? but we're on the yellows. So we're not going to get a look at it just yet. There's number 41 rejoining, so that is Tyler. Tyler Richardson. He was in 11th place, so it looks like he may have uh, come to strife. We'll have to see if uh, someone's caught that. We'll maybe see if uh, we see it pop up on race control. The driver's now all under... Uh, yellow flag conditions. Can we just say Jacob Akil from seventh on the grid, three minutes into this race, is running in second place. How has he managed that in a final, in a heat that is so close? We always say qualifying is important. He's just proven you can still overtake as we go racing once again. John Wall straight away going on the offensive here from Jacob Akil. Mason Jahal is going to want to try and run away, but it is Jahal Akil, Wall, Barrington, and Anders, your top five as they come over the line to start another gap now. There's a massive gap there behind them. And we saw drivers uh, gaining advantages under yellow. It looks like they've got a three and a bit second advantage there. So maybe this top five may be under investigation at some point. We'll leave that one down to the clocks and we'll talk about what we've got on screen. But Jacob Kuehl looking very, very racy. Him and Jahal have already built a bit of a gap over John Wall. We've seen a Kuehl come from absolutely nowhere to make a, make a move. Is this going to be 
um, the driver that can take it to Mason Jahal in this group. As they go through the chicane, the 17 versus the 8, as they come up towards the top section of the circuit. They've already got a bit of a gap over John Wall, Henry, who's got Henry Barrington right up behind him. You almost think Akil was debating a move down the inside there, but he thought of better of it. But like he just tried to pull the cart out a little bit before they head down under the S's. Over the start finish line once again. Lap three completed on uh, four laps completed on to lap five here as Jahal only has four tenths of an advantage over a cure. He ran away in the first one. He's really having to work for this one here is Mason Jahal. He's trying to bounce and get that car going. But up onto the top section, a cure has an answer for everything. And there we go, Tyler Richardson, a five-second time penalty for speeding under yellow. So he had that spin earlier on. I think he's trying to uh, hit the gas, try and catch the pack. And all it's done is give him a time penalty for the honour of it. McKeel really tucked under the rear bumper of Mason Jahal here. This I think he's be. selling himself up. Look there how close he is now. Defending. Jahal's defending. He hasn't had to do this before. It's coming. This move, though. Akeel's going to go It's coming it. now, surely. So he's not quite close enough oh. this time. Jahal just hasn't done. You can see him looking all over his shoulders. Yeah. Like, where is he? Which way is he going to go? At this point now, all this is going to do is going to bring Wald, Barrington and Anders back into this one. Akeel's looking racy here. And he's going to try and make the move as early as he can. Going through the top section here, Jahal's going to have to try and hang on for another five minutes here. Looks over the shoulder, he can feel Akil breathing down his neck as they head up onto the top section. He's from seventh on the grid and he's currently running second. Are we going to see a win from the middle of the grid for Jacob Akil? You can start to see that John Wall, Henry Barrington, Jake Anders are right up behind them. So this does come to blows at the front. Expect the three behind to try and get in and pick up the pieces. Ben Hamilton's still there in sixth. J uh, Elliot Potter, Adam Sims, John Bolter, Kasper Rabaki in P10. As Elliot Potter sets the fastest lap of 52.3, that's not surprising, considering these guys are really fighting here. Jahal, maybe a little bit more breathing room this time. As a kill really looking racy here. As Barrington's also looking racy against John Wall here. I also really like what Mason Jahal is doing here because he's not really driving defensively because Jacob can't quite get absolutely onto his rear bumper. He's still got a lot of speed. Oh, we're all over the place in the camera. There's, there's something going on somewhere. <laughs> Mason Jahal is definitely um, absolutely really, really pushing. And, um, and that's why there's just that gap. And the frustrating thing for Jake is he can't quite get absolutely on the rear bumper. When he made all those fantastic maneuvers earlier on in the race, he was absolutely there. And he's not. And once again, Mason looks behind and sees a decent gap. And I, I th again, I think it's four minutes to go. We can, there's still time. But basically, Jacob needs a bit more pace. He's finding a bit more pace at this moment in time. Let's see if we can really get on the back bumper of Mason and then line up one of those fantastic overtaking maneuvers that he has done so many times in the last few laps. Yeah, so it looks like that battle that, uh, challenge has maybe started to fizzle out as a couple of tenths to the advantage there for Mace, for Mason Child this time. Looks like Barrington's having to go defensive against Anders further behind, as uh, Anders really trying to make a move, make amends for that uh, poor start that he's had, but it's still Jacob Acure tucked under the rear bumper of Mason Jahal, John Wall, Barrington, Anders, Hamilton, Potter, Sims, Bolter, Rebecca, top 10, as they go through the top end of the circuit. Jahal looks like that gap maybe a little bit small. He looks over, he can see that he's not close enough to go for a move. Now, Jahal just needs to drive his line. There's no point defending just yet. Kuehl's not quite there. Kuehl, he's still debating it. He's still trying to defend. And all that's done is brought Kuehl back onto him. So he's going to try and go wide. Cover him as he comes through here. So he can't get a good run at this third hairpin and get the overlap again. Jahal's just trying to pull his car and extract every single tenth of performance to try and stop Kuehl getting on terms with him here. So round the round the Dunlop 2 corner into Met Bay. Little bit of a bump there from uh, Jacob Akeel on Mason Jahal. Jahal goes defensive again. Akeel trying to throw everything. He's defensive up the ramp. Mason Jahal really trying everything to keep Jacob Akeel behind him. Are we going to see the BSR driver go for a move down into the bottom section of the circuit where he's been so fast already here? So Jahal needs to try and build the gap as they go down the bottom section of the circuit. This is where Akeel's fast. He looks over his shoulder. He knows he's not got a challenge from John Wall behind. Are we going to see the move? Jahal's not going to defend it this time. Smart move there for him. But is Akil going to find a way down the inside this time? He's, again, not close enough. I reckon this is probably going to be them coming around to start the final lap here. So if Akil wants to try and get a BIKC heat win, he's got one last tour of the circuit to try and get it. Jahal, again, a little bit defensive through there. Not quite the optimal line, but he's not trying to give anything away to Jacob Akil. He's going to run it down the middle of the road here. He looks over his shoulder. He knows where 
Acule is. Holds it up the middle of the ramp again. Acule really has maybe one or two opportunities left to try and make this move. If he gets a good one out of this section here, he could set him up into the first half. But again, Jahal is going defensive as they go through the top section of the track. Akil really needs to try and get on the rear bumper now of Mason Jahal. Try and get a good run out of the first half and set him up into the second and complete the move in the third. Jahal again Here we goes go, defensive. defensive. Let's first see, time. can he do it? Yep. Jahal goes wide. Akil's going to run him up this run along the needs. outside. He needs to try and get a good run out of this third half. But I think Jahal has just held him at arm's length. It's a fantastic fight between these two young drivers. But it is just Mason Jahal who hangs on in second place. It's Jacob Akil. John Wall goes over the line in third place. Barrington comes home fourth. Anders in fifth place. Ben Hamilton comes home in sixth. That was a fantastic fight at the front um, between those two drivers. A lot of respect shown between Jahal and Akil. 1.6 six tenths was the advantage at the line but that's two heat wins for mason jahal it's fantastic and that was heat two. the same sort of thing happened came p6 but people started gapping me under yellows so there wasn't really much i could have done there but still pretty good positions for the semi-final i think semi-final starting seventh or eighth and hopefully we can make some good positions from there Hopefully it goes well. Racing here has done a phenomenal job. But this is the creme de la creme, the absolute elite. The, you know, it doesn't get any better than this in indoor karting in terms. And, uh, and here we go. Let's take you round for the start. And are we going to get a clean start? This is looking solid. Everyone's nicely bunched at the present moment in time in a second. Because they are staying very close to the pace car. I mean, really close. It's been going through the first few corners. Uh, it's almost like our pace car's been part of the race. But here we go, we've got Bobby, Bobby McGurr in pole position. What kind of start are we going to see from Bobby this time? Here we go, pace car disappears. It's nice and slow, looking here we go. Good. It's looking good. And 36, yes, he's got the inside line. Ooh, it's looking good for Bobby. In the middle. It's a bit of a push in the middle of the pack. McGurr's still in the yep. old shop there. It looks Lots like that's Clayton. So the top three are as they were. It looks like that may be a kill trying oh, to go down the inside of Max Kilby. There's definite that. contact there, but it's Bobby McGurr who's off and running. And it is Jacob Akul who's managed to get himself great into move. fourth place. Ben Another Hamilton's great. also got a move up there. Where has Jake Anders gone? Another great He's fallen down a little Tom. bit there. Yeah, so great move to get up towards the top four as they now file through the bottom section of the circuit. Lights Ooh, are yellow, yes. so some manner of thing has occurred on circuit. And so they're pointing. They're pointing next to the... Uh, and so the guys now will try pit, and uh, so see what we've got. Wondering what manner of thing is going on. They're trying to see what's <clears> going. <throat> and the lights go back to green and we start racing once again. The 10 quite a bit offline there. As we now go racing the top three. All knows the tail here. So it's McGurr, Wall and Clayton are your top three. Uh, and, Not and necessarily Wall. in that order. John, let's have a look as it goes through. Yeah, Jack Clayton, big slide going on to uh, just out of that last hairpin right down the far end of the track. Clayton looks racy here. Clayton really yeah, looks really racy does. here. Really ducks, but here we go. Bobby, he literally shakes his head as he goes out that corner. He's like, he knows he's got to drive defensively here. But for Jack Clayton, this is an absolute opportunity. If he can, if he can go through and take this, and he's looking really racy, and then put his foot down and get a faster slap, he might be in pole position for the actual grand final. It could easily happen. So Bobby McGurr leading, and he's driven absolutely beautifully all the way, all the way through the competition today. It has to be said, uh, Jack Clayton. Uh, let's have a look. Is he going to send one around? Yeah, this is a favourite favorite overtaking point. That's really. where McGurr got Clayton back in the heat. So when Clayton yeah. managed to lead one lap of the heats, that's where McGurr managed to take it back almost straight totally. away. So these two at the front have a bit of history between them. Totally. We're now up in towards the bottom end of the circuit. McGurr versus Clayton, the three tenths between them. They've got about a second over John Wall. Akil, Hamilton, Kilby, Anders and Bolter are the drivers who are currently safe. But they've got Kasper Abaski trying to get in on this as well as Joe Jennings in 10th place. James Burgess and Ollie Henderson are now moving up the order as well at the expense of Matt Stevens. But we are looking at the leaders at the moment with Jack Clayton going right backwards. on the rear bumper. Mm. Now Max Kilby going back with Ben Hamilton in fifth at the moment. Remember, we are after the top eight. It's not like the cadets where we have three semi finals, we only have two semi finals of the juniors, so it's top eight we are looking for. So currently John Bolter has that Hamilton last looks racy there as final well. place. Casper is close, but no cigar, I'm afraid, at the moment. Ninth place will not be enough to make it through to the grand final. Look at this, Jack Clayton, he's really, he was literally moving around there as if he was Yellow's in some kind again. of slipstream. Oh, there's the 10. That's 
that is... That is Kasper. That's Kasper Abaski, the ninth yeah. place driver. So that is pretty much going to be his day and be IKC done and dusted. That might be a bit of desperation because he, he, pro he probably would have known he was in ninth. One place off a place in that grand final. So um, uh, we're, go we're going indeed. green again there. So it's green with a couple of the drivers on the ramp. That could have cost a couple of them, maybe a tenth or two. As Jack Clayton re-ignites re uh, the challenge against Bob McGurr, these two are absolutely nose to tail. As you come through the double left-hander and head down the ramp, McGurr looks over his shoulder. He just sees that Clayton is about a tenth and a bit behind, with John Wall not, for, not too far back. Looks like Ben Hamilton's managed to get past Jacob McCuel. So uh, those two looking like uh, they're going to have a bit of a fight with Kilby. Anderson Bolter still the top eight, and the driver's punching their tickets into the main event. Another look over the shoulder for Bobby McGurr. Eight minutes remaining in this one. There's a little bit long for them to uh, try and hold on. So McGurr's already going defensive here with eight minutes remaining. That could give Clayton a look in here, especially with uh, the boost button to have a bit of a play with. So McGurr again defensive down the, down the straight, holding it up the middle of the ramp. Clayton not really finding the space just yet. I have a feeling it's going to be a bit of a send when this move does come, but I have a feeling this move is coming. These guys effectively deciding which row they're going to start the main event on. Currently, Bobby McGurr will start the put on the front row. Jack Clayton will start the second row. John Wall the third, and so on and so forth. But as we've seen before, you want to maximise your start position in the finals. If you want to try and get up towards the top ends of the... Uh, podium, you definitely want to try and make and your a life a gap. little bit easier. Big gap between eighth and ninth. So at the moment, the top eight uh, yeah, looks like they're pretty yeah, secure. Two and a half seconds. Two and a half seconds at this stage with seven minutes to go is a long way. He goes very wide. Look at that, Jack Clayton. Huge. He wants as much like over speed as he can possibly find to try and find a gap to go through there. And uh, yeah, great to watch. The drive being absolutely using the full width of the circuit trying to, uh, you know, it's a good job, it's a good job that Bobby can't see out of the back of his helmet, Bobby. So we've seen that Jack Clayton's everywhere on track, absolutely everywhere. And Ben Hamilton, fastest lap, 52.0, oh, we're so close to 51s, aren't we? 52.071 is an absolute stunning lap time. But here we go, we go on for another lap, six and a half minutes to go of this, and it's going to run and run. These two drivers are absolutely locked in combat. As Tom said, it is basically a battle for which row. Whoever wins this will be somewhere on the front row. Whoever comes second will be somewhere on the second row. And the difference that makes to winning this competition, as already said, it is absolutely huge. That's what they're racing for. And here we go. They'll we'll never the be closer. Yeah, it's just over halfway in this race with uh, six laps completed. It looks like we're in for six more as McGurr now just looks, looks over his shoulder. He's just trying to hold. Um, Clayton at arm's length, but Ben Hamilton has really reeled, it, reeled in John Wall there. It looked like he was right on the rear bumper. He has just set the fastest lap in the race in 52-0. So uh, we're looking at Mason Chahal early to see if he could get the 51. It may be Ben Hamilton at the pace he's going here. Another look over the shoulder there from the go. You can just see flashing into shot how big that gap is. It's about two seconds separating um, Jack Clayton and John Wall, but you've got Ben Hamilton. He's tucked right under the rear bumper of John Wall. There's still about two and a bit seconds separates Bolter and Jennings behind, so Jennings really needs to get the hammer down or hope that something kicks off at the front and he can profit from others' mistakes. But it's still Jack Clayton trying to throw everything he can at the back of Bobby McGurr, but Bobby just driving a very, very smooth race, defending where he needs to, not defending too hard, but just making sure that there isn't a place for Jack Clayton to throw that Biz EcoVault GT either down the inside or try and hang it round the outside. A little bit of a touch on the barrier there is Bob for Bobby McGurr. That's brought Clayton back onto the rear bumper. These two are still nose to tail. Five minutes remaining here in this semi-final five minutes to try and decide who is going to be on the front row for the main event later on this evening another look over the shoulder looks like Clayton got a bit of an overlap but again we've seen around the outside unless you can really hold it and try and make the move on the inside then it's a little bit tougher to try and do it a black and white is going to be going out to Jake Anders for loadings that's excessive pushing down in towards down the straights and in towards the corners that's the warning he won't get another one it will just be a penalty after that so he needs to now try and keep his nose clean for the next four and a half minutes because that could quite literally be the decider as to whether he gets into the main event or not. Currently running in seventh place, a five-second penalty at that point will drop him all the way down to 10th 
A member of said Joe Jennings need, would need uh, something to get him into the main event. That could be exactly what he needs to do it. But we're looking at the leaders still with four minutes remaining here. Bobby McGurr, Jack Clayton now have about three seconds over John Wall. With John Wall and Ben Hamilton about to have a almighty fight behind. There's the guys in second and third. It's like Noah's Carts. They all go two by two down the back straight as they now come in towards to complete yet another lap. You've got about three minutes here before we uh, decide who is going to be going through into the main event and who we're going to be sending home. Still Bobby McGurr soaking up the pressure it's a from great drive Jack from Bobby Clayton. McGurr, very, it? very measured drives, very mature drive from these yeah. young drivers. It's very easy to forget that these drivers are just, uh, these no drivers mistakes. are just um, are yeah. still right at the start. Bobby's, uh, what, 14, Jack Clayton 15. These some of the young, these some of the youngest drivers we're going to see in the BIKC over the course of um, this weekend, and they're driving like they've been racing for years. Because for some of them, they have they have been they have got a lot of time. If you've been in cadets since you were eight years old, quite easily be six or seven years karting yep. experience you've got at this point. These drivers both um, they're needing every inch of that experience at the moment. Yeah, they've had whether it's defending, whether it's uh, attacking. It's it's one of them. It's yeah. right down to the wire. This it doesn't get any bigger. It's this will this final few laps will pretty much decide the outcome for these two drivers or where they finish in BIKC 2023 because that row difference is absolutely huge. And uh, again, he's looking all over place. Literally, Jack uh, Bobby's looking more behind him than he was looking in front. So yeah, yeah. But Jack Clayton, he's tried everything. He's tried everything to kind of almost put. Bobby off has been driving around, but um, yeah, indeed, it's just a smooth performance from Bobby at the moment as we do enter the closing stages. It should be one more lap after There's this your 51. one. There's your 51, Jack 51 Clayton eight. gets it, 51 eight, eight, two. so it's not even just the 51, it, it's quite a way into it. Had it had to happen. It was going to happen at some point, but both of these drivers have, have had quite a lot of time around this circuit. Um, McGurr coming from Basling, uh, Clayton is a Trafford driver, they come over the line, it's probably going to be one more lap to decide the front row for the main event later on. Now, Bobby's been here before. He's been in the finals before. He finished fourth last year. He knows what it takes to get through and to get into also, the main event. At, look at Joe Jennings. He has closed that gap that was two and a half seconds all the way down yeah, he's to 0 0.7 of a second. It's not all done for eighth place. We might have Joe Jennings potentially racing in the grand final as it's well. It's going to be close for him. He's going to have to try and do something this lap, but we've seen stranger things happen in the BIKC through the years as they now go down in towards the top section. No defence required for Bobby McGurr as they go in towards the second hairpin. There is defence required for John Wall though, who's really fighting to try and hold on to his third place to his third place finish. They come through the double left the double left hander over the line. Bobby McGurr takes the first of the semi-finals here. Jack Clayton two tenths behind. It is John Wall who hangs on ahead of Ben Hamilton. Jacob McCure, Max Kilby, Jake Anders and John Bolter complete the uh, runners and riders who are going to take you into the main event. Joe Jennings, James Burgess, Matt Stevens, Lawrence Cameron, Kalen Beddo, Casper Abaski and Ollie Henderson, sadly. Their BIKC journey ends here. Fantastic racing. Flat out all the way through. And Joe, so, that was the semi-final and that was probably my favourite race from the entire BIKC event. As you saw, I made up tons of plays, had a really good battle for third place. I just missed out. It was so close at the end, though. Right on his bumper, like... And I caught up so much, I set the fastest lap a few times, I think. I didn't think I'd get the fastest lap in the end, but I feel like I could have if I had some more clear air. But I caught up so fast to third place, but I was so close to getting past him. I feel like a few times I could have got past him, but it might have been a bit dirty. So I just decided not to risk it, as I'm always already in a good position. And yeah, we've made it to the grand final, and let's just see how we can do in the grand final. Bring it on. It's food. Yes. <laughs> Okay, Ross will take a bribe <laughs> of food, but uh, yeah. Right, here we go. Now. Lee Illingworth just got my BIKC entry. He's coming next year. Sorry, yep. I've got, I've got to get away from the live stream because we've got a, the biggest race to run. Tom, do you want to take it through? So, this is crunch time now. We've got 16 drivers. We've got one championship to decide. 15 minutes is going to separate one of these drivers from a BIKC title. None of them have won it before. Some of only a handful have been here before both of them on the front row there. 
Bobby and Mason, the two top seeded drivers this time about. But the field is under the control of Bobby McGurr as they come through under the bottom section of the circuit. 15 minutes to decide a champion. Are we going to get going at the first time of asking? Lights go green. We're racing for the We're BIKC finals. Here we go. Bobby McGurr still holds it down the inside. Mason Jahal looks like they're going to be shuffled out by Jack Clayton, who gets a really good start trying to go in second. No, no he's managed to gain. There's contact there. Is there a car stop? Yeah, there's one off there. There's, one, there's there at least one, one off there. Lights go yellow. Yellows. Trying this to might pick be out flagged. who that is. That's Freddie Farrell's out there. I think there might be a second one in there as well. I think that may end up being a red. Drivers. Yeah, that looks like Crawley a red track is such a man. lot of love for the yeah. Crawley track. Crawley's dead. Like Crawley is yeah. good fun. If you can justify yeah. the run down, like from here, it's a, it is a bit of a track. Now this if you makes can justify you mention, the run, it's good fun. Makes you mention yeah. cat grease this time. Tom, I'll, I'll let you do that. Clearly, clearly me calling a start was bad luck, so I think you should call this one. Okay, so we've got, in cut 17, we've got Bobby McGurr. Are we going to get a clean start? It should be much easier when they get underneath the fire, but here we go. Uh, let's see, we're looking out for the green light. The pace car is going to pull away. And then, look, he's holding back. He doesn't need to go all that fast. Are we going to? Yes, I think we're on. Cat grease. Here we go. And cut 17, he gets immediate contact. He literally holds his hands Battle up and straight said, wow. in there. Straight in there. And once again, even though... Right, they were single file. They've still managed to end up Farrell really straight into tight. Navarro's been shuffled out there. He's lost at least two places. He's behind Ben Hamilton now. So he's probably at least outside the top seven, I'd say. As Bobby McGurr, Mason Jahal come through. Jack Clayton is now still there. Jack Clayton's actually got ahead of Mason Jahal. So for the first time all day, Mason Jahal has been overtaken. It's a semi-final all over again. So Mason Jahal has been overtaken. We've seen Jack Clayton can make a good start and he waited to the final to make it. So it's now Clayton, McGurr and Jahal coming through the top section of the circuit. Clayton on his first entry into the BIKC finals. McGurr and Jahal have been here before, but it is Clayton who's got the upper hand there on the driver who started on the front row. Bobby McGurr leads over the line. So it's Clayton in second, Jahal in third, Farrell, Wall, Hamilton, Barrington, Navarro down to eighth. So that restart's really cost him. You've then got Liam Martin, Bradley, Max Kilby rounds out your top 10. Jacob McCuel is in 11. Jake Anderson 12. Sadlowski's down into 13th. Bolter, Sims and Potter are your runners and riders as we head through the top end of the circuit. McGurr just needs to now control the pace as they come through the top end of the Navarro track. Navarro must be furious, Tom. Yeah, he must be Such absolutely furious. Such a great grip position. Worked so hard all day to get that grip position and he's running in 8th place after 2 minutes of the grand final. But with this is it. This is the absolute showdown these are the best drivers Jahal's here we go going for it. Going down the inside fabulous beautiful move. fabulous move that beautiful is move. Look, he knows hands in the air come on beautiful that move is Mason that is Bob. so Bobby is leading Mason Chahal who went backwards is back into that second position and surely now he's got to set his sights on tracking down Bobby McGurr who has managed obviously to pull away because of the action that is going on behind but we've seen some fabulous overtake maneuvers that is right Right Clayton's going for him again. Him. Clayton's going for him. So Chahal was signaling, let's go, let's try and catch him up, because you can see the eight, eight and a bit tenth gap that he's now got, but Clayton's not having a bar of it. He's going to want to try and overtake Chahal on track and then try and chase after Bobby McGurr. But all this is doing is it's letting the Basildon driver run away at the front of the field. So Chahal, Clayton, Farrell, Wall, Hamilton, that's how close the top six are at the moment. Farrell really is the one that uh, sort of spelled the downfall for Frederick Navarro. He made the move uh, on the opening couple of corners and that just left him towards the outside as McGurr comes over to record another lap. Oh, we've got a spinner there. That was the 28 that's gone round. And the yellows. That's Max Kilby. That's Max Kilby who's had a spin. So oh, Kilby's unlucky. now fallen right down towards the order. A driver who's had a bit of a mixed bag over the course of the day. Yeah. He's had some really good Showed performances. Shown huge potential. Shown great potential, but he's just not been there um, when it counts. And right now, he's down in 16th, and he's got a lot of work to do in the next 11 minutes if he wants to try and get back into contention for um, a decent run at the end of this. But Bobby McGurr, 1.4 seconds to the gap over the line. Jahal, Clayton, Farrell are your top four and just look at the gap that Bobby's got at the moment. He's really controlling this one. This junior field has been so close throughout the entirety of the day. And if Jahal and Clayton carry on uh, fighting in the way that it looks like they have been, McGurr is just going to run away, and he's going to run away with the title by the end of the day. It's brilliant stuff, and Bobby and now has got, oh, we call it a, a comfortable gap. Look at that. 
to have a gap like that in the final, it is Bobby Muggers race to lose here. It's all about second and third. And Jack Clayton and Mason Chahal have been two of the, of the best drivers this one. And, and they battled tooth and nail in all of their heats. Nobody's had it easy here. And now they've got the prospect. It's a tough prospect because they're literally watching Bobby McGurr disappear into the, just disappear. And yet the gap now, 1.7 seconds, and they know pretty much now that they are battling over second and third position. And that, after lining up on the grid, oh, that's got to be tough to take. It has to be tough to take. But here we go, the leader still, Bobby McGurr. But we're going to be focusing. I don't think we're going to see much of Bobby, pretty much, on the, on the TV between now and the end of the race because the action is absolutely all behind him. Can Mason break through? He is 0.4 uh, clear, but you, as soon as they cross the line, they get to the underneath the uh, underneath the bridge, and Mason and Jack Clayton closes right. He's really quick around this section of the track. This is where he did some of his overtaking earlier on in the event, and uh, yeah, absolutely, he's great around these corners. And this is where you look at him, apps touching, literally yeah, right bumper to, to oh, bumper. Uh. It's like this section of the track he is amazing at. And really close to the in on uh, on Mason Chahal. And then we get round to this end of the track, and it just seems to come back to Mason, and he's able just to just to pull away a little a, a touch. But the gap now 1.9 seconds. So here we go. And the fastest lap, time, a lot of battles out of there. So the fastest lap is 52.425. And guess who's got it? It's the leader. It's going to be the leader because he's got the clear track in front of him. Um, but whoa, battles out there. Freddie, yeah, Freddie defending. Farrell and John Wall as well, absolutely. But look at 29. That, look at that, Jack Clayton, almost fully alongside there, not on the racing Jahal's line, defending. but fully alongside. Jahal's having to defend here. They're not going to be making inroads into Bobby McGurr. They've got nearly two seconds to try and catch him in these next eight minutes. Time is really starting to run out, despite the fact we're about halfway through this race. These two, these two if they want to try and catch McGurr, they've got to get their heads down. They need to stop fighting. They need to work together, figure out which of the two is the quickest, get them in the front, and then go for it. Because if they can't, if they keep letting Bobby McGurr get away at the rate he's going, he's not going to be catchable. And it looks like here, Freddie Farrell's actually coming into yeah. this one. I think Freddie I saw a Farrell. dive there for, Hen for Henry Barrington in the background yeah. there. So Clayton now, instead of being the hunter, he's now the hunted as Freddie Farrell wants to get into this He's fight. in this battle, Freddie Farrell, for the, for the podium. No yeah, doubt. These he's guys come are from nowhere. Close here. And also Jack Clayton, all the attacking he's doing, you might not be fully aware, but the Freddie, Freddie Farrell is absolutely there. More contact, there's minor contact going underneath the mezzanine. That's why that's still defending. why he had a, a look behind him there to say, yeah, yeah, get off my bumper. And I think Jack Clayton third, Freddie Fowler still in fourth, but Freddie Fowler, he, he could easily make a surprise move here and really, really shake things up. Yeah, there's two steps on the podium being fought for here. One of them, when the music stops, is going to be left off the step of the podium here. But all this fighting is doing is just letting Bobby McGurr run away. That gap went up another half second on the lap. It's now 2.4 seconds. It's one of the biggest gaps we've seen so far. As Farrell goes down the inside on, on Jack Clayton. He gets the move. Farrell down now onto the podium. A very opportunistic move, but he's made it clean. It but was going to come, the black and white goes out. We'll try and figure out through race control who that was aimed at as Freddie Farrell now into a podium position. And what that has done is it's released Mason Jahal. So now the gap, now there is a bit of a gap there. Jahal can get his head down and he can see if he can eat into that advantage that Bobby McGurr has. 2.6 seconds it was over the last lap and John Wall now looking racy. He might be about to depose Jack Clayton of P4. Farrell looks over his shoulder. He's trying to see if he can uh, run away here. But Jahal now, he's got 2.6. That's the gap. That's what two and a half seconds in, a go in a, an indoor cart looks like. There's about a second, I'd say, towards Freddie Farrell as well. Let's see what Jahal can do. He can get his head down now. Let's see how much that gap he can eat into. Adam Sims with a yep, three-second penalty. Drops all the way to the back. So he is completely out of it. But let's go back to the vote. We're getting starting to get to the six minutes left. It's amazing, isn't it? How quick these races seem to go. Because they're so intense. They're absolutely fantastic. And there's a bit of camera shot is there. A bit of footage even for Bobby McGurr. Because we haven't seen much of him. He's been so far in the lead. 2.8 seconds in the final of the BIKC. It is a huge, huge margin. And Tom is absolutely right in any chance for Mason and Freddie to catch him. You're going to have to work together. I don't see that happening one little bit in the grand final. It is 
the battle for second and third, which is the main focus here. And Jack Clayton, after missing out, you know, he was, he was second. Uh, at the start, he got overtaken by Macy. He's been overtaken by Freddie. It's like, what has he got? Has he got anything left in the tank? Any emotional energy that he can pull these lap times in, get back on the tail of Freddie Farrell and see at least if he can leave here today after such epic racing with a trophy, which you've got to say, fully on the paper, he fully deserves. So I'll be absolutely honest. He's gone from second to fourth, but it's not over. Five minutes to go. Yeah, Jahal is not closing here. That gap just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So last time over the line, Magoo ran a 52.4, Jahal ran a 52.6. So that gap now, three seconds. Magoo is just extending that advantage now. And it almost looks like he's getting towards the point where he may be, dare I say it, uncatchable. But anything can happen in the world of motorsport, and usually it does. As he now got dropped through the top end of the circuit, Jahal really needs to try and get his head down. There's about four minutes of racing left. That equates to about four laps worth for him to try and uh, get onto the coattails of Bobby McGurr. There's the leader. He goes over the line. That is what the gap is this time. Over the line. It's still three seconds. That's the, last, that's the first time the gap has stayed the same over the last couple of laps. But we're looking now at the fight for third place. Freddie Farrell, Jack Clayton, John Wall are in this one as well. Henry Barrington in P6. Ben Hamilton, Frederick Navarro is still in P8. He's not been able to pull anything up to get a little bit further up the field. Fastest lap of the race, though, currently belongs to Jake Anders. A 52.099 is the fastest we've seen out of these juniors so far. Not quite into the 51 bracket, but you've got Freddie Farrell at the moment. The lead now, three seconds. Yeah, 3.1 Over seconds here. three seconds. Over three seconds with three, gap three second minutes to go. It's a second between second and third. It literally is the, the last battle here is between Freddie Farrell and Jack Clayton, which is 0.4 a second that will decide who steps onto that final step of the podium Let's to take that third now. place trophy. Gaps 3.4, it's gone up again. Bobby McGurr is just in control of this race. He's running away, so to speak here. He's pulled another four tenths over that lap. Mason Jahal still in second place. He's pulled a couple of tenths over Freddie Farrell's. The top three, the top two, looks relatively set here with three minutes on the clock. Freddie Farrell and Jack Clayton is the fight we're watching here. John Wall don't count him out of the podium just yet. If this all kicks off in front of him, who knows what could happen there? Plus, as well, we've seen we've seen penalties, we've seen black and whites load in for pushing. We want to make sure it's a nice, close, clean, fair fight as we watch our leader go Three through. Three and a half seconds. I almost. reckon this is probably going to be about two laps remaining <clears> at this point here. You see the the field file over the line. So I haven't seen any movement from Navarro, Barrington, Hamilton behind. They're trying to get on terms with Wall and Clayton, who are fighting over fourth place. With Freddie Farrell still took there. There's the fight for third place. We watch as they file through. Only one of them can stand on the podium. Only one of them can take home a trophy and a prize with Total Car in zero. And there's about two minutes for them to figure out which one of the two of them it's going to be. But at the front, still Bobby McGurr. The gap is now 3.6 seconds. That gap has gone up yet again. Jahal still has about a second over Freddie Farrell. So he currently looks like he's in a, a pretty safe position right now. As it looks like Bobby McGurr, as he comes around, is going to be starting his final final tour of the circuit en route to a British Indoor Karting Championship. Mason Jahal still hasn't been able to take anything out of him. 3.6 seconds the gap. We'll see what it is this time around. Freddie Farrell still trying to uh, hang on against Jack Clayton. Clayton's had a fantastic drive over the course of the day. But it looks like he may just be left a tiny bit unlucky. About four tenths off the podium here. Farrell looks over his shoulder. Last gap 3.7. It's gone up again. So last lap, Bobby McGurr, he is less than a thousand meters away from a British Indoor Karting Championship. All he's got to do is just coax that Biz EcoVault GT home now. Mason Chahal in second place. Clayton looks down the inside. He tries to go for the move there. There's no one home. Freddie Farrell's just hanging on to the final podium position, but we're looking for our leader, who's going to be coming through the last couple of corners any moment now to seal a British Indoor Karting Championship. We're looking at third place at the moment. Mason Jahal's there. There is our leader. He's three corners from home through the first one. He keeps it nice and nice and clean through the second one. He came here last year, 14 years old. He finished in fourth place just off the podium 12 months later. It's another championship for Basildon. It's a championship for Bobby McGurr, who wins the British indoor karting title. It's a podium for Mason Jahal. Freddie Farrell gets on the podium as well. There, your top three. The pyrotechnics go off. Well done to Bobby McGurr. Four 
seconds was the gap at the flag as they come over the line. Commiserations to Jack Clayton. He drove fantastically all weekend, pulled off some fantastic moves that we've analysed all weekend, but it just wasn't quite enough. He comes home in fourth place as, as Bobby McGurr pulls up towards the first place board. Mason Jahal's going to pull up next to him. And that's and it. That was the BRKC 2023 Junior National Final. And P6 in the end, which I'm actually pretty happy with my, for my first National Finals appearance. Um, definitely could have got on the podium, possibly, if I didn't have that car in qualifying. Because that qualifying sort of made everything how it went. And also with people speeding under yellows, that affected me a little bit. Could have got a few more positions, which could have helped in the national, in the actual grand final. But happy with how I drove. Made up a position, lost it, and then got it back on the last few laps. But yeah, really happy with it. Um, enjoyed it a lot. I think I really liked the electric carts. It was, I think I found it easier to overtake on this track like with the electric carts because you've got the boost button, which really helps you get past people. Because I've driven Warrington before on the old track layout in the petrol carts, and that was quite hard to get past anyone around there um, if, like, if they were defending. So really enjoyed it. Can't wait for next year, and hopefully... We could do a bit better next year. So, see you then.